a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Diana, Princess of Wales Diana, Princess of Wales was a member of the British royal family. She was the first wife of Charles, Prince of Wales, the heir apparent to the British throne, and the mother of Prince William, Duke of Cambridge, and Prince Harry, Duke of Sussex. Diana was born into the Spencer family, a family of British nobility with royal ancestry, and she was the youngest daughter of John Spencer, Viscount Althorpe, and Francis Roche. She grew up in Park House, situated on the Sandringham Estate, and was educated in England and Switzerland. In 1975, after her father inherited the title of Earl Spencer, she became known as Lady Diana Spencer. She came to prominence in February 1981 when her engagement to Prince Charles was announced to the world. Diana's wedding to the Prince of Wales took place at St Paul's Cathedral on 29 July 1981 and reached a global television audience of over 750 million people. During her marriage, Diana was Princess of Wales, Duchess of Cornwall, Duchess of Rothsey, and Countess of Chester. The marriage produced two sons, the Princes William and Harry, who were then respectively second and third in the line of succession to the British throne. As Princess of Wales, Diana undertook royal duties on behalf of the Queen, and represented her at functions overseas. She was celebrated for her charity work and for her support of the international campaign to ban landmines. Diana was involved with dozens of charities including London's Great Ormond Street Hospital for Children, of which she was president from 1989. She also raised awareness and advocated ways to help people affected with HIV AIDS, cancer, and mental illness. Diana remained the object of worldwide media scrutiny during and after her marriage, which ended in divorce on 28 August 1996 following well-publicized extramarital affairs by both parties. Media attention and public mourning were extensive after her death in a car crash in a Paris tunnel on 31 August 1997, and subsequent televised funeral. Early Life Diana Frances Spencer was born on 1 July 1961, in Park House, Sandringham, Norfolk. She was the fourth of five children of John Spencer, Viscount Althorpe, and his first wife, Frances. The Spencer family has been closely allied with the British royal family for several generations. Both of Diana's grandmothers had served as ladies-in-waiting to Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother. The Spencers were hoping for a boy to carry on the family line, and no name was chosen for a week, until they settled on Diana Frances, after her mother and after Lady Diana Spencer, a many times great aunt who was also a prospective Princess of Wales. On 30 August 1961, Diana was baptised at St Mary Magdalene Church, Sandringham. She grew up with three siblings, Sarah, Jane, and Charles. Her infant brother, John, died shortly after his birth one year before Diana was born. The desire for an heir added strain to the Spencers' marriage, and Lady Althorpe was reportedly sent to Harley Street Clinics in London to determine the cause of the problem. The experience was described as humiliating by Diana's younger brother. Charles, it was a dreadful time for my parents and probably the root of their divorce, because I don't think they ever got over it. Diana grew up in Park House, situated on the Sandringham Estate. The Spencers leased the house from its owner, Queen Elizabeth II. The royal family frequently holidayed at the neighbouring Sandringham House, and Diana played with the Queen's sons Prince Andrew and Prince Edward. Diana was seven years old when her parents divorced. Her mother later began a relationship with Peter Shandkid and married him in 1969. Diana lived with her mother in London during her parents' separation in 1967. But during that year's Christmas holidays, Lord Althorpe refused to let Diana return to London with Lady Althorpe. Shortly afterwards he won custody of Diana with support from his former mother-in-law, Ruth Roche, Baroness Fermoy. In 1972, Lord Althorpe began a relationship with Rain, Countess of Dartmouth. They married at Caxton Hall, London in 1976. 
Diana's relationship with her stepmother was particularly bad. She resented Rain, whom she called a bully, and on one occasion Diana pushed her down the stairs. She later described her childhood as very unhappy and very unstable, the whole thing. Diana became known as Lady Diana after her father later inherited the title of Earl Spencer in 1975, at which point her father moved the entire family from Park House to Althorpe, the Spencer seat in Northamptonshire. Education and Career Diana was initially homeschooled under the supervision of her governess, Gertrude Allen. She began her formal education at Silfield Private School in Gayton, Norfolk, and moved to Riddlesworth Hall School, an all-girls boarding school near Thetford, when she was nine. She joined her sisters at West Heath Girls School in Sevenoaks, Kent, in 1973. She did not shine academically, failing her O-levels twice. Her outstanding community spirit was recognized with an award from West Heath. She left West Heath when she was 16. Her brother Charles recalls her as being quite shy up until that time. She showed a talent for music as an accomplished pianist. Diana also excelled in swimming and diving, and studied ballet and tap dance. After attending Institut Alpin Vidi Manette for one term in 1978, Diana returned to London, where she shared her mother's flat with two school friends. In London, she took an advanced cooking course, but seldom cooked for her roommates. She took a series of low-paying jobs. She worked as a dance instructor for youth until a skiing accident caused her to miss three months of work. She then found employment as a playgroup preschool assistant, did some cleaning work for her sister Sarah and several of her friends, and acted as a hostess at parties. Diana spent time working as a nanny for the Robertsons, an American family living in London, and worked as a nursery teacher's assistant at the Young England School in Pimlico. In July 1979, her mother bought her a flat at Collahern Court in Earl's Court as an 18th birthday present. She lived there with three flatmates until 25 February 1981 marriage. Lady Diana first met Charles, Prince of Wales, the Queen's eldest son and heir apparent, when she was 16 in November 1977. He was then dating her older sister, Lady Sarah. They were guests at a country weekend during the summer of 1980 when she watched him play polo and he took a serious interest in Diana as a potential bride. The relationship progressed when he invited her aboard the Royal Yacht Britannia for a sailing weekend to Cowes. This was followed by an invitation to Balmoral to meet his family one weekend in November 1980. Lady Diana was well received by the Queen, the Queen Mother and the Duke of Edinburgh. Prince Charles subsequently courted Diana in London. The Prince proposed on 6 February 1981, and Lady Diana accepted but their engagement was kept secret for the next few weeks. Engagement and Wedding Their engagement became official on 24 February 1981. Diana selected a large engagement ring that consisted of 14 solitaire diamonds surrounding a 12-carat oval blue salon sapphire set in 18-carat white gold, which was similar to her mother's engagement ring. The ring was made by the crown jewellers Garrod. In 2010, it became the engagement ring of Catherine, Duchess of Cambridge. The Queen Mother gave Diana a sapphire and diamond brooch as an engagement present. Following the engagement, Diana left her occupation as a kindergarten assistant and lived for a short period at Clarence House, which was the home of the Queen Mother. She then lived at Buckingham Palace until the wedding. Diana was the first Englishwoman in 300 years to become the spouse of an heir apparent. And she was also the first royal bride to have a paying job before her engagement. She made her first public appearance with Prince Charles in a charity ball in March 1981 at Goldsmiths Hall, where she met the Princess of Monaco. 20-year-old Diana became Princess of Wales when she married the Prince of Wales on 29 July 1981 at St Paul's Cathedral which offered more seating than Westminster Abbey, a church that was generally used for royal nuptials. The service was widely described as a fairy tale wedding. 
and was watched by a global television audience of 750 million people while 600,000 spectators lined the streets to catch a glimpse of the couple en route to the ceremony. At the altar, Diana inadvertently reversed the order of Charles' first two names, saying, Philip Charles, Arthur George instead. She did not say that she would, obey, him. That traditional vow was left out at the couple's request, which caused some comment at the time. Diana wore a dress valued at £9,000 with a 25-foot train. After she became Princess of Wales, Diana automatically acquired rank as the third highest female in the United Kingdom Order of Presidents, and was fifth or sixth in the orders of precedence of her other realms, following the Queen, the relevant Viceroy, the Duke of Edinburgh, the Queen Mother, and the Prince of Wales. Within a few years of the wedding, the Queen extended Diana visible tokens of membership in the royal family. She lent the princess the Cambridge Lover's Knot Tiara, and granted her the badge of the Royal Family Order of Queen Elizabeth II. Children The couple had residences at Kensington Palace and Highgrove House, near Turkbury. On 5 November 1981, the princess's pregnancy was officially announced. In January 1982, 12 weeks into the pregnancy, Diana fell down a staircase at Sandringham, and the royal gynaecologist Sir George Pinker was summoned from London. He found that although she had suffered severe bruising, the fetus was uninjured. Diana later confessed that she had intentionally thrown herself down the stairs as she was feeling so inadequate. In February 1982, pictures of the pregnant Diana in bikini while holidaying was published in the media. The Queen subsequently released a statement and called it the blackest day in the history of British journalism. On 21 June 1982, the princess gave birth to the couple's first son, Prince William. The delivery took place under the care of Pinker in the private Linda wing of St. Mary's Hospital in Paddington, London. Amidst some media criticism, she decided to take William, who was still a baby, on her first major tours of Australia and New Zealand, and the decision was popularly applauded by her own admission. The Princess of Wales had not initially intended to take William until Malcolm Fraser, the Australian Prime Minister, made the suggestion. A second son, Prince Harry, was born on 15 September 1984. The Princess asserted she and the Prince were closest during her pregnancy with Harry. She was aware that their second child was a boy, but did not share the knowledge with anyone else, including the Prince of Wales. False speculation that Harry's father was not Charles, but James Hewitt, with whom Diana later had an affair, was based on the alleged physical similarity between Hewitt and Harry, but Harry was born before the affair began. Diana gave her sons wider experiences than was usual for royal children. She rarely deferred to the prince or to the royal family, and was often intransigent when it came to the children. She chose their first given names dismissed a royal family nanny and engaged one of her own choosing, selected their schools and clothing, planned their outings, and took them to school herself as often as her schedule permitted. She also organized her public duties around their timetables. Problems and separation Five years into the marriage, the couple's incompatibility and age difference of almost 13 years became visible and damaging. Charles resumed his relationship with his former girlfriend Camilla Parker Bowles, and Diana later began one with Major James Hewitt, the family's former riding instructor. In 1989, Diana confronted Camilla about her and Charles' extramarital affair at a birthday party for Camilla's sister. These affairs were later exposed in May 1992 with the publication of Andrew Morton's book, Diana, Her True Story. The book, which also revealed the princess's allegedly suicidal unhappiness, caused a media storm. Morton later revealed that in 1991 he had also conducted a secret interview with Diana in which she had talked about her marital issues and difficulties. The Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh hosted a meeting between Charles and Diana and unsuccessfully tried to effect a reconciliation. Philip wrote to Diana and expressed his disappointment at the extramarital affairs of both her and Charles. He asked her to examine their behavior from the other's point of view. The Duke was direct and Diana was sensitive. 
She found the letters hard to take, but nevertheless, she appreciated that he was acting with good intent. During 1992 and 1993, Leaked tapes of telephone conversations negatively reflected on both the Prince and Princess of Wales. Tape recordings of the Princess and James Gilby were made public in August 1992, and transcripts were published the same month. The article, Squidgygate, was followed in November 1992 by the leaked Camillagate tapes, intimate exchanges between the Prince and Camilla, published in the tabloids. In December 1992, Prime Minister John Major announced the couple's amicable separation to the House of Commons. Between 1992 and 1993, Diana hired voice coach Peter Sutlin to help her develop her public speaking voice. In a videotape recorded by Sutlin in 1992, Diana admitted that in 1984 through to 1986, she had been deeply in love with someone who worked in this environment. It is thought she was referring to Barry Manneke, who was transferred to the Diplomatic Protection Squad in 1986 after his managers had determined that his relationship with Diana had been inappropriate. Diana said in the tape that Manneke had been chucked out from his role as her bodyguard following suspicion that the two were having an affair. Penny Juna suggested in her 1998 book that the princess was in a romantic relationship with Manneke. Diana's friends dismissed the claim as absurd. However, in the subsequently released tapes Diana stated that she had feelings for that. Someone, saying that, I was quite happy to give all this up, and, just to go off, and live with him. She described him as, the greatest friend, she's, ever had, though she denied any sexual relationship with him. She also spoke bitterly of her husband saying that, he, made me feel so inadequate in every possible way, that each time I came up for air he pushed me down again. Charles aunt, Princess Margaret, burned, highly personal, letters that Diana had written to the Queen Mother in 1993. Biographer William Shawcross considered Margaret's action to be, understandable, as she was, protecting her mother, and other members of the family, but, regrettable from a historical viewpoint. Although she blamed Camilla Parker Bowles for her marital troubles, Diana began to believe that her husband had also been involved in other affairs. In October 1993, the princess wrote to her butler Paul Burrell, telling him that she believed her husband was now in love with his personal assistant Tiggy Leg Burke, who was also his son's former nanny, and was planning to have her killed, to make the path clear for him to marry Tiggy. Legberg had been hired by the prince as a young companion for his sons while they were in his care, and the princess was resentful of Legberg and her relationship with the young princes. Prince Charles sought public understanding via a televised interview with Jonathan Dimbleby on 29 June 1994. In the interview, he said that he had rekindled his relationship with Camilla in 1986 only after his marriage to the princess had, irretrievably broken down. In the same year, the news of the world claimed that Diana had made over 300 phone calls to the married art dealer Oliver Hoare. These calls were proven to have been made from both her Kensington Palace apartment and from the phone box just outside the palace. According to Hoare's obituary, there was little doubt that she had been in a relationship with him. However, the princess denied any romantic relationship with Hoare, whom she described as a friend, and said that, a young boy, was the source of the nuisance calls made to Hoare. She was also linked by the press to rugby union player Will Carling and private equity investor Theodore J. Forstman, yet these claims were neither confirmed nor proven. Divorce Journalist Martin Bashir interviewed Diana for the BBC current affairs show Panorama. The interview was broadcast on 20 November 1995. The princess discussed her and her husband's extramarital affairs. Referring to Charles' relationship with Camilla, she said, Well, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded. She also expressed doubt about her husband's suitability for kingship. Authors Tina Brown, Sally Bedell Smith and Sarah Bradford support Diana's admission in the interview that she had suffered from depression, rampant bulimia, and had engaged numerous times in the act of self-mutilation. 
The show's transcript records Diana confirming many of her mental health problems, including that she had hurt arms and legs. The combination of illnesses from which Diana herself said that she suffered resulted in some of her biographers opining that she had borderline personality disorder. The interview proved to be the tipping point. On 20 December, Buckingham Palace announced that the Queen had sent letters to the Prince and Princess of Wales, advising them to divorce. The Queen's move was backed by the Prime Minister and by senior privy councillors. And, according to the BBC, was decided after two weeks of talks. Charles formally agreed to the divorce in a written statement soon after. In February 1996, the Princess announced her agreement after negotiations with the Prince and representatives of the Queen, irritating Buckingham Palace by issuing her own announcement of the divorce agreement and its terms. In July 1996, the couple agreed on the terms of their divorce. This followed shortly after the princess's accusation that the prince's personal assistant Tiggy Legberg had aborted the prince's child. After which Legberg instructed her attorney Peter Carter to demand an apology. Diana's secretary Patrick Jeffson resigned shortly before the story broke. Later writing that the princess had exulted in accusing Legberg of having had an abortion. The divorce was finalized on 28 August 1996. Diana received a lump sum settlement of £17 million as well as £400,000 per year. The couple signed a confidentiality agreement that prohibited them from discussing the details of the divorce or of their married life. Days before, letters patent were issued with general rules to regulate royal titles after divorce. Diana lost the style, Her Royal Highness, and instead was styled Diana, Princess of Wales. As the mother of the prince expected to one day ascend to the throne, she continued to be regarded as a member of the royal family and was accorded the same precedence she enjoyed during her marriage. The Queen reportedly wanted to let Diana continue to use the style of Royal Highness after her divorce, but Charles had insisted on removing it. Prince William was reported to have reassured his mother, don't worry. Mummy, I will give it back to you one day when I am king. Almost a year before, according to Tina Brown, the Duke of Edinburgh had warned the Princess of Wales, if you don't behave, my girl, will take your title away. She is said to have replied, my title is a lot older than yours, Philip, Diana, and her mother quarreled in May 1997 after she told Hello! magazine that Diana was happy to lose the royal style. They were reportedly not on speaking terms with each other by the time of Diana's death. By contrast, Diana's relationship with her estranged stepmother reportedly improved in the years before her death in 1997. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries Would you like to